Hi everyone, my name is Frank Walsh. Thanks for joining me on another workflow walkthrough. Today's episode is going to be a little bit different and just for fun. We're not going to spend much time in Darktable today. We're going to do a little focus stacking using Hugin and Infuse. Now a lot of new cameras have focus stacking capabilities built into them. That includes my uh, Olympus EM1, which isn't particularly new. But it does do focus stacking with the autofocus uh, pro lenses. But uh, this is a little bit different. I'm using a vintage lens here, adapted manual focus, so the auto stacking functions in the camera won't, won't help me out. And I'm really just doing this for fun. have this little uh, Mach 5 Hot Wheels car set up, and you can see from looking at the images here that the Mach 5, uh, at a relatively close distance, it's really not possible for me to get this thing in focus from front to back, even if I were to stop down to, to F22. So, you know, here's an image where I'm focused on the front of the car, and then I sort of moved my way back the car until uh, I got all the way to the back, and then jumped around, made sure the seats were in focus, and made sure the very back, back fin was in focus, and now here the front of the car is completely out of focus. Now this is going to be a little bit of a challenge, I think, because uh, this lens has a little bit of what you would call focus shift, as uh, you can see the image moves around a little bit as we step through them. So uh, alignment is going to be interesting to see what happens here. So it's going to be an experiment for both of us. But the first thing I need to do is I need to um, send a TIFF file out for Yugen uh, to use because it can't process raw files. Before I do that, I think I'm going to do some very basic processing on this, uh, just to show you how we can apply the same process to a bunch of images, since all these were exposed the same way. I'm going to jump into this image here. I'm going to go into basic adjustments, bring my exposure up. Turn on my overexposure indicator. A little too far. Let's back it up. Okay, got nothing overexposed. I'm going to go into tone curve and I'm going to pull the shadows down a little bit, increase the contrast, the image, bump the highlights up. Just to give it a little bit more contrast. And last but not least, I'm going to come into the contrast equalizer and just pull up a little bit here. Okay. I'm satisfied with that. Uh, I don't really need to do much more with this image, so I'm going to jump back to the light table. And I'm going to take these changes and apply them to the rest of the images. So I'm going to come over here to History Stack, copy my entire History Stack, select the rest of these images, paste all. And now the changes that I made have been applied to all the images. So now I'm going to select all the images, and I'm going to come down here to Export, and in this case, I'm going to export as a TIFF. And I'm going to make a selection for a temporary folder. Uncompressed TIFF. No scaling. And go. And I'll come back to you after this is done. So I exported all those images from Darktable into TIFF files. And now I'm going to use a tool called Hugin, H-U-G-I-N. I'll put a link in the description, which is a panoramic stitching tool, but it also can be used for aligning images and as a front end for doing some focus stacking. Hugin is a very powerful tool. It doesn't have the shortest learning curve in the world, but uh, there's a lot of information online that can help you use it. Today we're going to use it to stack images, so the first thing I need to do is add the images into the file. So I'm going to come down here to add images. I'm going to go to my desktop where the temporary folder is and I'm going to grab the images that I just exported from 
dark table. Now it wants me to tell it a little bit about the lens. Uh, I'm going to come in here and put it in that it was 205 millimeters. It's a 2x focal length multiplier because I shot it on my micro four thirds and it's a normal lens. What you can is import the images. I want to tell it how to uh, how I want to align the images. So down here in the feature matching section I am going to tell it that it's a line image stacked linear. So there's things in here for fisheye, panoramic, vertical lines, etc. Uh, stacked linear is going to give me the best results in this case and I click con create control points. Now uh, Yugen is going to do some work and it's going to come back and tell me when it's finished. Okay, it's found 170 control points. I click OK. Okay, after Hugen has created the control points, I want to come down here to the positions menu and click positions YPR and calculate. And that's going to optimize the alignment. Do I want to apply the changes? Yes. Now I'm going to jump into the preview, the fast preview window, and go into the move and drag. Click fit. Okay, go into crop. Click HDR Auto Crop, and good. Now I want to go back to the main window. Now in the main window, we're going to go to Stitcher. And underneath Stitcher, we want to turn off anything related to panoramas. So we uncheck panorama. We want to come here to rectangular and do crop and say calculate optimal size. Let you can do the work there. And we want to come down here and say we want no exposure correction and low dynamic range. And what that's going to do is that's going to tell Yugen not to put all these images together into one, but to now create a whole new set of images that are aligned correctly without any exposure correction. So even though I shot this on a tripod, I'm going to go through this alignment process anyway to make sure the images are just aligned as well as they can be. Okay, once I have those parameters set, I'm going to go ahead and stitch. It wants me to give a prefix for the files. I'll call it Mach 5 and save it back to the temp folder. And even though there's an error message here, I can see in the window on the left-hand side that it's working, and it's creating the new TIFF files. We'll let that finish. Okay, and we're done. So what's happened here? Well, I see a bunch of new files in here. And if I take a look at them, they look exactly like the old files did. And the only difference is they should now be perfectly aligned. So now I can take these files and I can put them into another program that is going to do the focus stacking for me. I could also use Photoshop or GIMP or any number of other things, but I'm going to use a, a part of Hugen that's called Infuse. And it's basically a batch program. And I'm going to run it from the command line today, not because I want to, but because it's the only choice that I have currently. Since I'm on the newest version of Mac OS Catalina, the graphical front end for Infuse uh, isn't, uh, isn't supported yet. It's not a 64-bit application, so it, it won't run. Um, but I can run it from the command line, and that gives me a little bit of, of practice in, in command line uh, commands, and we'll see how it goes. Now, like I said, there is a graphical user interface for Infuse that, unfortunately, I can't use right now. So today we're going to play with the terminal, which is a bit of a frightening place. But uh, first thing we want to do is change directories to the directory where my working files are. And the easiest way for me to do that is to say CD and then drag and drop. And then... I'll do an ls to list files, and I can see that I'm now in the appropriate folder where all my files are. So the next thing I want to do is I want to take a look at Infuse. So Infuse, for me, uh, your mileage may vary, is in my Applications folder and is uh, part of the package. Because I'm on a Mac, so everything gets put in neat little packages. And it's part of the PT Batcher uh, graphical user interface application package. One of the contents in there you see is Infuse. So I can 
execute that by dragging and dropping it into my terminal. Uh, but I need to know what options to put, and I don't really necessarily know what those are off the top of my head. So if I put a dash dash help, then I get to see all of the options for inputs and outputs on, on Infuse. So I have uh, the number of blending levels to use, the output file name, uh, compression information, then I have uh, advanced options for, for blending, depth, wrapping, exposure, saturation, contrast, weight, uh, a number of different things. And then ultimately I have to specify what the input images are. So we see here the context for Infuse, which is Infuse, Options, Output, Image Name, and then Input Files. So I uh, did a little Googling around on the interwebs, and I found the uh, appropriate settings to use for, for focus stacking. And I'm going to go ahead and enter those in now. So the internet's told me that uh, the, for photo focus stacking the options to use at least to start with for infuse are to set the exposure weight to zero saturation saturation weight to zero because we're not interested in exposure stacking uh, contrast weight to one with a hard mask and then an output file uh, in this case I'm calling it mock stack .tiff. now what I need to do is include all of the input files that I want infuse to use so the easiest way for me to do that is to drag and drop them from the finder, finder window. So I have the window open where my uh, stacks, where my input files are, and I'm going to drag them one by one into the command line. Okay, so now I have my parameters specified, I have my output file named, and my input files specified. Now we cross our fingers and hit enter. Okay, so after all that monkeying around, what do we get for our money? Well, I've gone ahead and imported the output file from Infuse into Darktable so we can take a look. So just to uh, jump back here, this is our uh, image where we're focused on the, on the front of the, of the car, and here's our image where we're focused on sort of the back of the car. And here is the final TIFF file. So here you can see we have sharp focus at the, at the front of the car. And we have sharp focus on the nice dirty bits at the back of the car. The windshield's in focus. The wheels front to back are in focus. What we do have, you can pretty clearly see, is a little bit of haloing here, a little bit of haloing over here, and on the back of the car, particularly around the rear wheel, we definitely see some some haloing here. And as I suspected, uh, that's going to be the nature of the lens that I was using, since uh, changing focus on that lens, it's a it's what was called a uh, single action zoom lens back in the day and uh, changing focus actually has uh, a small change on the field of view so even though we align these images very carefully they weren't <clears throat> they weren't all exactly the same size the scale was a little bit different from front to back and I don't think I'm going to be able to do anything better with Infuse with this. I did play with a couple of options that I found through a little bit of searching, changing the edge detection and uh, changing the the uh, algorithm that it uses. Um, and I ran a couple, I ran it a couple more times and to, to be honest the results didn't get any better. So <clears throat> um, this in this particular case this lens at this distance uh, for a subject like this is probably not the ideal lens to use to try to do stacked macro photography, but I still think it was fun. We did get the result. I mean, we we definitely have an image that has uh, is in focus from front to back, which we would not be able to accomplish, and with uh, with any f-stop on on any uh, normal or macro lens, and we did it all with completely free software. So we didn't, you know, you could spend money. You, know, you can definitely spend money to get tools to do focus stacking. 
whether or not those tools, whether uh, Photoshop would do a better job with, with this image than Infuse did. I, I'm not sure that it would because of the fact that the scale is, is slightly different. I think it gets pretty tricky to blend multiple images if the scale is not exactly the same. I'll have to give this a try some other time with a lens that uh, that doesn't shift as you focus it and, and see if I can get better results. But in the meantime, thanks for joining me today. I hope uh, you learned a little something from this, and I'll see you next time.